Hey there, Happy Crocheters. I'm your co-host, Eva Dam from The Crochet Crowd. Today is Stitching Up Sunday, where we pair up stitches together to form awesome patterns. On screen is today's multiple to change the width. If you want to do an afghan, refer to our afghan size sheet for inches. Chain with the multiple number to get the width you need. Then add the second number at the end of the chain for the balance. For yarn and hook size, darlings, ensure the hook complements the ball band information or close to it. Grab your hook and yarn and let's go visit Mikey in the studio. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's hosted by friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today I'm going to show you my tool and this is called a hairpin lace loom and you see it probably in the yarn aisles near you and you're thinking okay what exactly is that thing and if you're like me you probably bought it and then it's been sitting in the closet for like years. <laughs> <laughs> like an inch full of dust because you really don't know how to use it or why you even wanted it in the first place. So today I'm gonna take out the mystery of what this is. So this is a hairpin lace loom and you can make really cool strips with this and then being able to attach it to other strips however you want or you can crochet along the long loops. So this is what it looks like in mid process. So I'm going to be uh, breaking up this tutorial on being able to use this tool. So First thing I want you to do is just, let's just put the loom together to make sure you understand it. So these holes, do you see those there? Those determine the width of your loom. So you can see that you can go really small, bigger, bigger. So we're gonna use the four inch one which is gonna be the widest. So if you want something a little more tighter you can just go smaller. So just put them on. And I wanna teach you the motion. The motion is what I struggled with the, is the most. And let's just take it and put it like this. So pretend it's your cell phone, click, 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 you know, looking at photos and, and I want you to hold it like a cell phone. And let me just back with the camera a little bit more for you. Okay, so we're surfing through our cell phone. So you're holding it like your cell phone. I want you to rotate this. So the rotation will always be the same. So let me go back over across the table so it's easier. The rotation will always be the same if you're right-handed you will flip it like you've just flipped the page of a book. So you know lick your finger. <laughs> I don't even know why I did that. So and flip the page. So flip. You will always flip in the same direction. So lick and flip. <laughs> okay. Lick and flip. You get that? So it's always going to go in the same motion like flipping the page. Now the hook has to be done in a certain way because we have to keep licking and flip, lick and flip. The hook has to be able to also do that. So what we have to do is that you're going to be crocheting and the hook is gonna face down like this. So look at this like a football field. I don't even understand football if you ask me. Really I didn't even know what the Super Bowl was. So it's flip it down like this. So the goal is is that each every time you do a stitch you need to flip this hook up. So you need to rotate it so that the bottom is facing up. So the bottom of the hook goes up like this. Okay, do you get that? And then the back end goes as if you're pushing somebody out of the way because they're too long at the water fountain. So you wanna push that the back of the hook down and it will go behind the loom like this. Okay, and you will do that every time you do a stitch. It's really not that hard. It's just a matter of getting used to the motion. So let's do that again. So the hook is in front. You're gonna rotate the hook. So see how it's in front of the, of the goal post. I don't even know if that's what it's called in football. Um, so it's in between the posts. And then you're gonna push the hook back through the other side like this. So the only thing that's gonna be blocking you is gonna be the project going across. So you have to flip up above and put it through the post and then back down the other side. And then once it's on the other side you lick and flip. And then the hook will be on the right side again. So then you do the magic. It's just a single crochet what we're gonna be doing today. So you, once you do it okay it's like bionic crochet. And then rotate the hook up and then back down on the other side and through. So you'll see other video tutorial hosts that will do it and they say put the hook and just rotate it straight up like this and then let it fall to the back side. So I found myself I don't need to go straight up. I just need to get it so that the back end can go between the posts. So now that you know the motions we're going to load up the secondary yarn and we're going to load it up so it goes through those holes. 
So do you see those holes there? And I'm just gonna choose the next one that's outside. So I don't wanna choose the same one as the rods. And we're going to get our yarn ready. It's a secondary yarn and we are just gonna make it in there so that it travels through the bottom. So let's just cut it. It's about four feet long. I'm not gonna do as long here today. But you want to do two strands that are equally the same length. So once you just do one leg, just do another and you have two. I now want to put one strand onto a tapestry needle and I wanna be able to pull it through the hole. Because I'm right handed, I wanna load up the left hand strand first. So taking my base, I want to choose the one hole that is not the one that we're gonna work in. We're just gonna go one in and I'm gonna come from the base and it really doesn't matter which one is the base until you go through the first time. And I wanna travel up and match the hole to the top one and pull it through. And all I'm just going to do is form a tie with this at the top. Now I started with the left here so that I can uh, load up the right hand side with the actual slip knot that we're going to start. So if you're left handed you will have started the right side of the secondary strand. I'd also then trim any extra yarn from here and just leave it smaller. And now we're gonna load up the other side. When you load up the other side, you need to get a slip knot ready. So do your slip knot. I'll wait for a second. And I want you to put it onto the right side. So if you're right handed, you'll put it onto the right. If you're left, you'll put it onto the left. Now when you travel up with the next yarn here, you're going to go through the base through but that's not all. You also want to travel through the loop. So just go right through the loop and you also wanna go into the hole that's in the top and then you wanna tie that shut. So the first loop has been captured inside of this secondary yarn. This is going to help the yarn um, loops from not twisting. and then trim. And then once you're satisfied with that, I want you to place the base on and then I want you to pull those two strands to the other side to where they stop. And where they stop is where you're going to place a tie. So when you do this, when you slide these uh, uh, loops down, they will literally travel on top of these um, secondary strands. But because the base is tied like so, they will not fall off the other side of the strand. Therefore, when you're playing with this kind of concept that it'll all bunch at the very base of this and so it's a lot easier to untangle when you have to unspin it because you're turning always in the same direction. The thing I want you to pay attention to the most is that the yarn is going to the back side of the loom. So it's hanging down below. So if you did it and it is going up over the top of the loom like this, uh, you're not getting any points today. So just move this so that the yarn leading to the yarn ball is on the back side. And just using your fingers and your thumb, just pinch it about halfway. And if the knot, so for example, if I tighten this up a little bit and the knot is not appearing in the middle, you can just loosen this up again and just move the knot. It's a slip knot, you can do that. So you only really have to worry about this the first time. So let's begin and do our first flip. You ready? Here we go. So just flip. It's in the same motion of turning the page of a book and flip. Don't worry about that straggler. Just let it go out of the way, out of mind. And notice how that I'm using my fingers here to pinch. And you can put this yarn into your hand like you normally would with crochet and put it up onto an angle. So it's kind of out of your way a little bit. So we want to just untangle the strand here. Make sure it just falls to the back. And noticing that that is not in the middle. So it's not an accident that I did that. Well it is an accident. I don't know what I'm talking about. So put this knot in the middle. So just move it. So if you need more, just give it some more slack. And make sure it's, it's roughly about in the middle. Just close enough to say that you did it, right? 
Once you're satisfied, we're going to begin and get ourselves started. So I want you to take your four millimeter, your size G and put it between the first section right here, this, this hole which is the slip knot. And I want you to grab onto this yarn that is leading to the yarn ball and just pull through. Now I'm making it look really easy. The first time I did this, oh my god. <laughs> I thought I was gonna quit everything. So once you pull through, just slide the hook up and then that'll hold it in front. I'm gonna demonstrate that again. So just put your hook into that slip knot hole and grab in the yarn. You're noticing that I'm not wrapping really weird. I'm just pulling that down. So just hook the yarn and pull down and I'm gonna slide the hook back up so it locks it. I'll do one more time. So in between the slip knot hole, hook it and pull. And then just move your hook up a little bit and it will lock it over top. Okay. So we're not yet done. We need, we need to still finish off this stitch. So the first time through, which is what we're doing right now, the way to lock this is that we are just going to yarn over the working yarn and then pull through. And pull through that loop. and now it's locked. Okay. So now that's the first time that you're gonna do it and the rest of it is all just gonna be single crochet. Just saying it very simply. So now we need to do the rotation of the hook and then lick and flick. So what we're going to do is that we're gonna take this hook. Our goal is to get the back handle through the goal post. So to do that, all we're just going to do is that we're just gonna rotate the back handle so that it can get through the pole post on the top side and then down. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate again. So your hook, when you finish that stitch will probably be right here and you wanna get the back end of that handle through the goal post. So if this is too high, just shift it down and then get the back end through and push it to the back side like you're pushing somebody out of the way that's at the water fountain too long and then just let it fall and it will be on the back side of the yarn. So now what you need to do is you need to do your lick and flick. So rotate like you're flipping the page of a book and rotate like this and turn it over. And letting some yarn come from the ball so that you can drag it across the back. And now we're gonna begin a single crochet. So to begin the single crochet, it's always gonna be the same here. So see this big loop right here? You want to slide into that loop first. So you're gonna slide right in. And then yarning over, picking up the strand that's leading to the yarn ball. I call it the working strand or the working yarn. And pull through that loop only. and then I'm going to yarn over again. So I'm just gonna come up and yarn over again and pull through the two loops and that's a single crochet. And then the stitch is complete, that's it. So what you can do now is that once the stitch is complete, what do you have to do? You have to get this handle to the other side. So just rotate it up and through the goal post and back down to the other side of the work and then rotate. Okay, ready for another stitch? So the very last loop that is available, so it's the last one, it's the highest one available, you're going to slide it between the loop and then you're going to grab the working yarn and pull through. And then you're going to yarn over and pull the working yarn through those two loops. You've just done a single crochet. So let's go again. So your hook is on, you've now done the stitch so you get to get the hook to the back side. So just get the back up over. So push that like somebody at a water fountain. This happened to me in grade one, that's why I remember that. And then rotate and then start your next. So get the last loop that's available. So it's the highest one on the loom. You put it into that loop first and then grab the working yarn, pulling it through. 
then you have two loops yarning over pulling through two. Okay, so to do the next stitch move the hook to the back, turn and begin again. So the latest loop pull through pull through two. Now because you're rotating it back and forth it's really easy to maintain this single crochet right in the center. So once you get that done move your hook back and flip and begin again. Okay I'm gonna speed up. So the idea is to keep a count of the number of loops and what I decided to do is that you can use stitch markers if you wish as well instead of just yarn but yarn is always available <laughs> in my house that's for sure. And I marked every 25th loop on the one side of the loom in order to keep it uh, as a count. You may wanna do both sides of the loom so just mark the 25th on both sides and then you can keep an eye on that as well. And so I just did so that it wrapped around so that I can remove it quite easily and then what I did is that for this particular example I can get a hundred loops on this hook before I or on the loom before I have to slide it off. So I marked every 25th and then once I got the hundred on there I then opened up the loom and then slid off most of them except for the final two and and then I just did another hundred. So it just actually makes a lot of sense if you do it that way. So what I would do if I were you and you were me, I would just grab a spare piece of yarn and once you got the number count that you really really wanted, I would just go along the side like so. Just loop the yarn over and then pull through the hole. And this will keep help you keep an eye on the number of counts that you will have and you will continue to grow this. So when you get enough of these loops on there I showed you right at the beginning all you just need to do is that you just need to open up your loom on the base. Because the strand is on there it won't get untangled once it comes off. So I would take just grabbing your fingers just slide right off. I would keep the equal amount on the loom and once they're off just take this piece here and just loop it and put it, sorry, just loop, let it loop and then just slide it back on. So this piece here that is gathering at the base can never uh, fall completely free. It will always be attached to these strands here which will make it easier for you to be able to manage at a later time. So what are we gonna do with this uh, particular sample? I wanna show you a mistake that you can make that I did make and I wanna show you um, if you see it this is why. So I'm gonna flip over my item and I'm gonna turn. So a mistake I made on this thing is that I noticed that one of my strands was way out of whack and what happens uh, to that in order for that to happen is that and then I had a frog back and that, this is how I figured out what I was doing wrong. So usually when I pick up a loop I make sure that the top strand that is gonna go over is the one I'm grabbing before I'm doing my single crochet. Just like so. Okay, so everything is looking good. So you can almost see like a zigzag formation going on. So what I realize is that there's sometimes that you can make a mistake. So here's the mistake. What I notice is that once you start really getting this thing full it's sometimes easy to grab the bottom one first and you think it's the top but it's not and then you use that one to go through and then you pull through. And on the front side you can see okay well it looks right and when it's bunched up you won't even see it. But when you go to flip this over you're going to notice that one strand is coming from the complete opposite side. So you'll notice that this strand is actually coming all the way across into this loop. And that's because I've done the bottom strand as thinking it was the top. So if you see that in your work at all then you would have realized that you actually grabbed the bottom part of the loop and not the top and the only way to get rid of that is, unfortunately is to have to frog it. So when you turn it around just look for those and if you see it then you're gonna have to pull out. So in this case if you have to pull out even though you're working with the loom you can just simply just pull on it and just unwrap it from the loom and get yourself reset in order to continue on into the future. So let's say that you got the amount of loops that you wanted. What you can just do is just trim your yarn from the yarn ball and then just pull it through the final loop that you have 
here. I'd also recommend that you try to keep the same amount of loops available on both sides. So when you go to crochet and you wrap around you're creating a loop only on one side and then when you wrap it again and go to the other side you're creating the loop on the other side. So essentially it takes two turns to make sure that there's equal numbers of these loops. Once you're satisfied with it and that's locked into position all you're just going to do is just slide it completely off like so and what you can do then at this moment is just trim this yarn to release it and let it completely fall off and you will have the whole thing available on the secondary strand. So when you put those down you'll see that the secondary strand is still running through and you'll have to then just cut the loop that's available at the bottom of this one so that you can get the base off on this side. So it's completely free and so then you have an empty loom ready for something else. So now these secondary strands are right inside each loops making it easier to see. So eventually you'll have the very long strips of these hairpin lace. Now the secondary yarn you can still see that's inside here so it keeps it nice and organized as you're going. So once you have it all nice and organized you can then just trim that yarn. So just have it and you can see that you can still see it here but I have released some of this from both sides so that these are clear and I'm having them lay flat down on the table. It's easier to do this on a table. So what I would not do is just pull out all the secondary yarns right away. I would keep it just in there and then keep your piles just separate from here and what we're going to do is that we're going to put them together and we're gonna use five loops on either side. So make sure this whole thing is sitting nice and flat. It almost looks like a centipede when it's down and start and put it towards you so that the yarn tails are towards you like so. So what I wanna do is that I wanna mix these together so it does a braid down the center. So you can keep adding more strips to these to the loops that are still free on the one side and you can also crochet those as well so that they will hold into position if you really want to as well. So you can actually crochet around these loops or like by bunching them together or you can actually just braid them together. So what we need to do is to keep these loops organized. So starting on the right just put five loops in starting from the bottom like this. And once you get the first five in then that side is done. You're then coming to the other one and you're gonna come straight from the base. So starting at the bottom make sure that you're always grabbing the loops in the same manner so that it looks the same. So start one, two, three, four, and five. Once you have the five on this side you just need to pull those five through the beginning five like this. You don't need to pull too tightly, just enough to hold it in a position. So now we have to move up on this side and grab the next five that are available to you. In the beginning it's always harder to do. So just if you're thinking I'm making it look hard it's just because it's the beginning. So grabbing the next grouping of five that's available to you on the one side just flipping it over. Make sure that I grab every loop that's possible and starting in the next one. So starting from uh, the bottom collect the next five. So one, two, three, four, and five and make sure I don't leave any loops in behind. And once you have those five pull through the other five that are already on the hook. And then once that's done on that side you're going to jump back to this gray side here starting in the first available loop and collect five. So do you see how to do that? You're just gonna go back and forth on each side collecting until your strip is completely done. Now if you happen to miscount at any point and you ended up with four um, strands or maybe even six no big deal. I would just literally pull it through. Um, it would probably be hard to tell that there's an extra loop. So pull through that one. 
and I'll jump back to the other side and start moving up on the loops that are not yet used. One, two, three, four, and five. Pull through. So here's my situation. I've come up all the way and the one side is done but the other side is not. So what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna trust in myself. The way that this one worked here is a scarf so this is just the one braid that's right in the middle. So I'm not too worried about the length of it. It's actually pretty long as it is. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna undo the final knot here. The slip uh, the one that we did pull through and I'm going to use that to my advantage and I am just going to undo the remaining of the stitches until I get to the last one. So that I can cut that at a length that's more doable. Now the other side I can just frog all those but if it's the side that is where I started um, it's kind of impossible to frog because it's in the wrong direction. So I would try first to see if you can and if you can't what I would do is cut it closer to the place where you need to be and then pull out from that point. So it appears that this is where I started so I cannot undo that. So what I'll do is that I'll come back closer to where this is down here because all I just need is an extra long yarn tail to be able to secure it. So I'm just going to safely cut it down here and then just undo the remaining of the knots until I get to where I need to be. So that's what I would do. So now that I've secured the remaining out, all I'm just going to do is that I'm gonna take one of the strands here and just feed it through. And this strand here is just locked it around this one here and now I'm gonna pull. And using a smaller hook, I just need to get it tied so that it's stuck with the very last loop so that it doesn't unbraid anything all the way. And I would make sure that's extra secure. And I'd also make sure if it were me and I were you. I'd run that through a tapestry needle as well because there is one around here somewhere and I would just feed it underneath the knot to get it out of the way so that it can't be seen. So once it's tied just go in the, the braiding area itself. This yarn here is like tube yarn so it's a little harder than normal but just coming through and then back in the other side and it should be good to go. So now the braid shouldn't fall out on you. So what are you gonna do with the remaining of these loops that are on the other side of all of this? Then what you can do is that you can either add more braids to the remaining loops so that you can keep on attaching or you can just start crocheting these and then secure them into position as well. So I'm gonna crochet them because this is a scarf and I'll show you that next. I put one side together just to make sure that I understood how it was done and then now I am going to do the other side. So what I'm about to show you is actually for both sides. So I just want to make sure that I got it right. So I actually changed the color from this um, beige. I used the beige on this side just to make the loops look amazing. So let's start on the one side. I want you to have it right side up so that the braid is actually facing you and let's begin. Okay, so let's begin. We're gonna create a loops with these. So we're gonna have them in groups of three. So what I want you to do is take the first loop and make sure that it's laying flat and you stack them. So starting from the first one at the bottom, the next one on top and the next one. And then I want you to flip and twist. So just twist it. So then the back one looks like it's going in the forward just layer. So just lay your hook down. So this is like an awkward first date. The very first time that you do it, it's kind of awkward in the sense of getting it started. So start off with a slip knot and make your life easier and just pull through the loop. Now you're gonna chain one to lock and you're gonna put in three single crochets in the very first time. And I'm going right up over top of the straggler. So one, two, and three. So there will be three single crochets in the very first loop and three single crochets in the very last loop. 
and now we're gonna move on. So just grabbing the next set of loops that are available to you. So just stack them. So the next one is on the bottom, next and next and then do a twist and then put in two single crochets. I'm a little bit uh, loose with these stitches as I'm doing them just so that you're aware of that. So okay, and so next three. So one, two, three and twist and put in two single crochets. And you're gonna do that all the way down. So if you're off by one loop, just put four together. If you have just two, maybe you can just do two at the end. You can make a decision when you get all the way to the end. So I wouldn't worry about it. The only time I would really worry about stuff like that is if you're putting two strips together and you need the exact same amount, then maybe so. In this case, it's just a little scarf. Well, a really big scarf, but that's about it. So I'm doing this and the braiding is the center piece of it and I am using the opposite colors of the braids. So the other side of the, the work has the gray, so I'm applying the gray in single crochet format here. So I'm gonna work on my way all the way down. It takes a little bit of time to do it and then once you do this, you basically have the foundation to do whatever you want to do. You can add more, you can uh, add less. If you wanted to do strips for like a blanket, you can so uh, uh, like do back, do whip stitching and all that kind of jazz and put things together. It's all completely up to you. So you'll notice that it has a bit of texture not only with the braids but also with the, the wave effect that you'll see there as well. So let's continue to do this. So you're putting in two single crochets in each one of these groups of three loops. <laughs> 